Okay, so I travel quite a lot by train, and I suspect lots of you folks do as well. And the one thing I really don't like is when the train I'm getting ends up being delayed and I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs for ages, waiting for it to go. So, oh, okay. So uh, when I'm uh, sort of planning a journey, this is the kind of thing going through my head. Oh, I want to pick a train that's not going to be delayed, but how do I do that? And that's the inspiration behind this ODI Summer Showcase project. Um, we've built a website that allows you to plug in the details of your train and see how, it's, how punctual it has been over the past few months. So, in you put where you're going from. Here we've got Basingstoke going to Waterloo on weekdays at about eight in the morning. So that's a commute I did for a while. It should take about an hour, but sometimes it takes a lot more. And you can see straight away over on the right there, all the trains that do that journey around then. Um, we've got, in particular, the uh, 0816 um, not looking too great. These, these blocks are for each day of the week, and basically it's a scale from green means it's very punctual, it's always on time, down through yellow and orange meaning it's a bit late sometimes, down to red meaning it's permanently running late. So we can see that that second one there is probably the, the weaker one. So um, looking a bit closer at it, you can see it's generally most of the time, on, particularly on Wednesdays there, um, it's been about somewhere in the 5 to 15 minutes late. Uh, window, so that's not too great. So I could actually travel 10 minutes earlier on the train before it and spend a lot less time sitting in delays. And let's have a look at where these delays happen. So the three stops on that train, it goes from Basingstoke and then Woking and then Waterloo. And you can see on every day the colour getting a bit worse on the spectrum in that last bit up to Waterloo. So basically what's happening, that train's it's doing all right up to Woking and then probably rush hour congestion on the way into Waterloo is holding it up, so it always seems to be late. Um, So, how do we do this? Um, there's loads of open data in the rail industry. Um, things like timetables are open. Um, the signaling system provides real-time uh, information on the movement of every train. So every time a train moves around in the network, you can get a notification of what's happened. Um, and then National Rail Inquiries have built this system called Darwin, which basically aggregates all this real-time data and uh, non-real-time data like the timetables, and also some proprietary data from train operating companies that is not available any other way as open data, pulls it all into one and gives you an open data feed um, that you can subscribe to. So this is widely used system, so the, the departure boards you see in stations use it, um, mobile applications you might have used also use it, and our delay explorer on the previous slides uses it. The one catch is it's a real-time feed, so it's pumping out data as it happens. So we've had to build a big system to record all that data and analyze it so that we can show you how trains performed over history. Um, so, Delay Explorer is great if you want to sort of geek out or look at your train in detail, but if you're actually traveling, how can you make use of this information when you're on the go? So, we build a, a mobile application called Faster Route, and it's basically live travel information for uh, UK Rail, um, and we've incorporated, um, we're starting to incorporate this data from the Delay Explorer, from the Summer Showcase project, into it. Um, and the way we've done that so far is we give you this traffic lights, these left bars down the left-hand side. We're looking at a, a trains departing from Stoke-on-Trent. And you can see the yellow, red, green bars. It's basically a traffic lights. Green means this train's generally on time. Yellow means this train's a bit unreliable. And red means um, this one's regularly problematic. So you might want to avoid it if you've got a choice. Um, and then when you're looking at the details of the train, we give you a bit of an explanation. So the example on the right there, the reason it's, um, you can't really read it, it's a bit blurry on the screen, but the reason it's been given a red sort of uh, quality is because it's often um, 15 minutes or so late. So fairly unreliable as trains go. Um, so if you want to try all this out, um, delayexplorer.fasterroute.com gets you to the website where you can look up uh, the, the history of trains in detail. Um, you can download the Faster Route app from the App Store or from Google Play. Um, the features I've just shown you around train reliability are in the Android version right now, but it'll be a couple of weeks until the update lands uh, in iOS with the same things. Um, and also the code for the Delay Explorer is all open source. You can see it on GitHub. Um, so if you're, uh, that's all I've got to say, but if you're interested in any of this or want to discuss it any more with me, I'm around all day, so I'm very keen to chat to anyone interested in this. Thanks. <laughs>